good margin. Like I have stuff I want to get off my chest. This stuff that people have done to me that I'm scared to. The stuff I've had to put up with like to keep my job, you know. And I know a lot of people like that. A lot of people have been threatened. A lot of people have been abused and they, they, don't, they can't help. And there has to be some kind of safe place and then people refuse to hear it. Even abuse places refuse to hear it. A therapist will say, yeah, that's a police matter. Don't tell me about it. I don't want to hear it. And the police said, well, no, that's not police matter. That's therapist matter. Nobody, they give you the run around. And then nobody wants to hear it. So I know that this, everybody has that stuff. And there's no, there's no, the resources that they say they're there to help are, just aren't. I know for a fact, because I've been calling around for 10 months. Everybody says, well, that's not my job. They don't call me about it. They don't want, they don't want to help. And so I want to be that. I want to provide that for people. Um, have a f safe place that they can, they can, they can, they can, they can tell what they're calling in. I think that's what the true, that's true healing. That's what it is true healing is, is, is that painful stuff you don't want to look at that we ourselves don't want to look at if you could have therapy for years and years and years if, you, if you're scared to bring up the stuff you're scared to bring up it ain't gonna work because that's the stuff that needs to be addressed you see why do we create these situations in our lives we, I believe life is our own dream and we create everything that happens to us for some reason, I see so many people intentionally hurting themselves. Um, maybe out of, of guilt that they, they feel that they deserve the punishment, or maybe the, the calling for help, or the, they, they think that they're doing what they need to do to, to protect themselves out of fear. Um, I see people doing self-harm. I see people intentionally hurting others so that, that they will get hurt. And I'm posting pictures of their wounds on, on, on social media, like, like medals, like wearing medals. Well, I certainly will never want to hold back the help if I can get it. So, you know, I, I, you know, you lead me to water, I will drink it. I, you know, I mean, um, and and then the people in my life that are like that, they themselves have said, you know, in, in, in therapy session that there's a reason we're here to get, I know there's a reason we're, I'm here with Zeke, we're, we're here to get, or they themselves have said that. So this girl, I, I may have told you last session that the, the, she, moved in 10 months as well. She's a scam artist. And then I was in, in a, a group last night, a narcissistic uh, healing group, recovery group. And and they told me that I'm enabling her by, by falling for her, having sympathy for her and playing along with her thing that I should not have sympathy for her uh, and uh, not give in to her um, you know, and, and do not cooperate with her at all. But she's, she's real, real, like professional narcissist. She's been living in my house for, since last October. Um, she said she was being abused by a boyfriend. And then they taught me, I, I'm in this Tarzana Treatment Center, which is a group, um, perpetrators group. The people go to real criminal, the court sends them there. Uh, because they've beaten the girlfriends or they've beaten somebody uh, in in the relationship, so the court sends them there to get. They have to the the, the facilitator. The and he himself is is people there are real people that the the people who help 
It's not like a college classroom. I was really, really disappointed in, in the, the professors I've had. The psychology professors, horrible, horrible. Um, the, the, just not the, 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 they, and then the last night, the, the, the narcissistic group, they told me that the worst narcissists are the college professors. They, they have, have had the same experience. But here is you are in the midst of the, you know, the real criminals, the real drug addicts, the real abusers, and they talk the real language the real life experiences, the people themselves who are there to help, um, you see how they respond. In, in the college classroom, is it, you know, my, my girlfriend had said um, she's horny right after her period, and then she, the professor goes, well, we don't talk, use that term in, in the college classroom. We prefer to use the term uh, sexually aroused. It's just like ridiculous. Here, just real people talking real situations, and then you learn the real, you know, processes in the mind, the real crimes that happen. Yeah, they told me that that's what they do. That the the that they and then they're all so familiar with this trick that they they claim to be the victim, and then to to someone who goes out helping victims like me. So, and then they, they, they move in, and then you become the victim. They become the perpetrator. And then the, after they're done with you, they move on to the next person telling they're being abused, claiming. And then her expertise is hurting in such a way, gaslighting, so that it doesn't register. Nobody, the lawyers don't want to hear it. The cops don't want to hear it. The judge doesn't want to hear it. And so that's the weapon of choice, is to go on wearing you out for 10 months, month after month, with, with this you know, screwed up reasoning and uh, language that really deteriorates, really uh, has a toll on you. And, and then, so that doesn't register as a crime. They don't, nobody wants to hear it. And then, uh, and then, and then by, and do that while they they accuse you of you know the, the victim they portray the, the expert at portraying the victim as a per perpetrator in a way cops actually believe her and they encourage her and then even if she has like 14 crimes on her 14 arrests on the record and she has a list of people she's done this to in the past and the investigator told me that they're scared to talk because she's She's friends with 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 drug dealers who who threaten and, and I've gotten those threats. She's brought them into my house, and the police say, "Well, she's allowed to have visitors." And, and so, so she goes. She's able to go on victim after victim doing this, and I tell the police, but they they that they don't care. They're oblivious. And so, the, the this finally the moratorium on 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 COVID evictions is this one lawyer said she will help me said but do, do not under any circumstance show any sympathy that you have any emotion for her because, because the judge will say that, that it's not if you try to help her out then it's not that bad and they'll throw the case out she said you can't be wishy-washy about this you want to get her yeah. out and you have to show you have the, your girlfriend she will she's testified before she will again how intolerable it is staying with her if you portraying that you're trying to help her turn her around, it won't, you, you're your own worst enemy in front of the judge, so don't be doing that. You have to, you know, have single mindedness that she intentionally, repeatedly violates the restraining order, repeatedly, intentionally. Just calling the police, one day she called the police twice for, for just silly reasons, just at, at, impulsively just to wear us out doing that. And the police, I said to the police, well, isn't that a violation of the city? They said, no, she's allowed to call police. She peeled off, I put on a piece of paper stuck on the wall. God didn't put you on this earth to do this. And she peeled out a whole bunch of those and she peeled them off, but they keep supporting her no matter what. 
um, think, thinking that she's the, 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 the victim, I'm the perpetrator, forcing her to have sex. She's been there for 10 months complaining. There's all these places that I've provided for her, shelters specifically for her, um, for her condition. It's a, a Mary Magdalene project. project. I called them, said, well, we can't help her unless she calls and asks for help. You can't be calling on her behalf. There's all these places that have room that can take her, that take she has better cow, that they have her insurance, they cover her insurance, they have room, they can help her. Uh, she doesn't ask for help. She just wants to stay here and keep complaining about how horrible it is. So, so the, the police just don't listen. The police have this uh, defensive communication style when they don't, they don't want to communicate. They just block everything you say. I have it all on, on video. My, my, um, my security cameras have everything. I've recorded everything. It's ready like, to submit it to like 60 minutes or something. I want the world to know what's going on. I think 60 minutes, I've, I've, I've submitted to, to uh, Dr. Phil's uh, producer, um, Justin, something the same. Um, I keep Oprah or anybody who will listen, some show, some, to somebody to listen to this and know what, what's going on. That the fact that she's been going on, and I really feel for her past victims, she specifically picks Middle Eastern victims because it, it fits her narrative. Cops seem to hate Middle Eastern people. Maybe that's part of it. A white girl, but a Middle Eastern guy who's forcing her to have sex because she needs a place to stay. I mean, they buy into that. And I, I think the past victims who are Middle Eastern would use for that purpose. I really want to know, talk to them and see what she did to them, how, how they, what, what's happened. She herself said, you should see what I did to the last guy. I want to know what she did, what these guys, how, how they've survived going through this all this time. You know, the stuff she does to them, the stuff she does did to me. She killed that dog while I was arguing with the police officer, had the restraining order in his hand, but was refusing to look at it. She let our dog out into the street. We went looking for it and Daddy had to scrape it off the asphalt. It's buried in our backyard. But that devastated her. That devastated her. She was attached to that dog. She had that dog for 10 years. And she did that intentionally. She hurt that dog intentionally. She herself has her own dog, that huge pit bull that she's abusing constantly, yelling at, yelling cosmos constantly at that dog, keeping that dog in that room. I've reported repeatedly to, to animal shelter to what she's doing. They said, well, that doesn't rise to the level of, 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 it's not illegal to keep the dog in the room. You let it out to, to go to the bathroom. She lets it out in the front yard just a few minutes every day. Um, and then the dog barks, she yells at it. The bark cries, she yells at it. The dog is left alone there for hours and hours. We can't do anything about it, uh, you know? Uh, 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 and, uh, and then she treats the dog, I guess she treats the dog better than she treats us. Um, um, and it's a horrible thing that she posts on her Instagram, like skeletons and things. This is my next project. The skeleton has roses in it, some kind of ornament, uh, you know. And the lawyer was making fun of her. She said, that's you, you know, she, she thinks it's a joke, you know. <laughs>